Thank you. Okay. And we're going to open up the Water Talk Commission's meeting. It's uh, 345. Uh, President's calling here. Keep one ears. Bob Sullivan, Bob Josie, and Bob Manerick. Manerick. Uh, we're going to discuss on. Um, got it's a discussion on the uh, professional services reason, yeah, for state tech. Money for the, uh, to do surveying. The, yeah engineering portion <clears throat> um, it's not the surveying portion that's already being taken care of so it's yeah. the the preliminary design and project management for the uh, three water main upgrades that we need to do in order to progress towards the million square foot building that's being proposed um, down by the uh, McIntyre pit <clears throat> so um, just based on timelines and everything else, and you know, I'm sure you're, you're all aware that Bob's been going crazy running around trying to get these projects to, to pull together. So, um, so some of the Thanks. some of the things that came up were uh, Mass Works is usually in the fall, but they had combined it, so now it's a, a combined grant application through Mass Works, um, and the timeline doesn't work to our favor. If we were to wait until town meeting to get the funds appropriated, um, luckily we overestimated on one of the projects that we were looking at for the risk and resiliency assessment that's due the end of June of this year. So we overestimated that one, um, which has enough money left over to cover the first portion of this that we need to get done in order to make the deadlines for the Mass Works grant. Um, so the purpose of this meeting was to kind of get together and make sure everyone's in agreement to take that money that was earmarked for the risk and resiliency through our budget and just pay for the engineering. It's similar services, it's engineering services, so you know it, it works within what we're planning for the, the money to be used for, just a different project as opposed to the risk and resiliency. So I don't know if you want to fill them in a little more on. Yeah, just to give you an idea of this, um, I don't know if I explained <coughs> the one stop at the last time, but the, the state had Ten different categories of grants. Mass Works is one of them. They've now put all those grants into one program, and they called it One Stop for Growth. So even though we're technically applying for a Mass Works grant, we have to apply through this One Stop program. We found out that um, the um, pre-application we called an expression of interest. Um, we submitted that. About a month ago, we finally got feedback from the state, and they said, you qualify for two programs. All this infrastructure that we have right now will qualify under MassWorks. The extension to Blackstone Logistics Center can apply under the uh, what they call is a rural and a small town grant process, and that's a new one. That's now one of the ten. So now we, we have to, that's why if you notice, we split this up into A and B, so you're going to see a lot of referencing in the future to a 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B. That's because now we have to take these grants and apply the, the million square foot warehouse will be Gilboa, North Street, Northeast Main, under Mass Works, and the extension will be going towards this small town grant. So we have to split the cost, um, and it's on. Do we have the split cost yes. in in this? Yep. Just after that, keep going. I've got the fee for services, but not the split cost one. The A and the B. Not page it right after the signature page. Attachment A. Oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah attachment A. <clears throat> If you notice that graph in the bottom third of the page, like project management, it's got town and extension. We've called the town A and the extension B. Preliminary design, town and extension, and that's how we're dividing it up now. What, what Bob and I are going after right now is just the first two items, the 8,500, which is broken into the 4,900 and the 3,600, and then the 38,000, which is 28,4 and 9,600. 
which totals the 46, uh, 46,500. That's, that's what we're going after today. Just the first two items. <clears throat> the permitting and final design, which will be 3A and 3B, and final design 4A, 4B, will be approaching the uh, town meeting, special town meeting with, with those funds. So this is just to get the ball rolling and keep it rolling so we don't take any engineering delays. Now as far as the million square foot warehouse, a quick uh, update on that. Everything was signed last Tuesday. It is ready. The name of the company that's coming in is called CRG. They're out of the Midwest. They build big warehouses of which this is probably one of the small ones for them. Um, I've been on their website and I've seen some five, six million square foot warehouses that they built. So they, uh, this, this is what they want. So we will be dealing with them. We're hoping to meet with them in a couple of weeks. With the MassWorks grant, the, all the money has to be basically up front. So if it's, you estimate this is about a $3 million job, maybe with the extension almost a $4 million job. Yeah. Round, num the, round numbers. Yeah, round numbers between three and a half and four million. Four million. <clears throat> MassWorks requires that money to be appropriated up front and then they reimburse you. So we will be working with these companies. The Blackstone Logis Logistics Center will be Scannell and we'll be working with CDG, uh, CRG for, for our, for our uh, warehouse. And I'm sure they, they need this water just as much as we do. So they'll be uh, fronting, fronting, uh, promising the money. So the, on the, the 46 5 budget, that's obviously coming out, come out of our budget. Yep. Special town meeting on the balance. Right, it'll be 53,200. 532. And what are we looking on the water side or on the side? The remaining, he's one of the remaining. Oh, the remaining will be coming through the special town meeting or the annual town meeting. But one he's, of those he's asking, from from where is it coming? Through water sewer or through, uh, through the town? From the tax base or from water sewer use? I believe tax base. Yeah. <clears throat> that's. I think that's what we all agree it should about. be. Yeah. But um, I mean, I did earmark a article for that, just because I didn't want to take a chance at the town saying no and then arguing back and forth. I just wanted to have a placeholder. Um, yeah, so that you, still needs to be discussed. You were the cheap insurance for that to make sure it's covered. Right. Just in the end. Just to cover it. Um, yeah. You know, I, I don't I just think. I want to it, make sure we're, quick, we're doing the budgeting as we speak with final item. Now. Right. And that's, and I need to yeah. hone in these numbers a little bit um, just to kind of give you guys an update real quick. I got numbers today. Um, I had talked to a couple of generator people and we came up with the fact that we can probably cut that generator size in half, which also cuts the cost about in half. Actually, I had a, a quote for the 400 KW for about 92,000 and a quote for the 200 KW was about 44,000. So it's roughly in half, but um, so, so those articles that I put forth, I put worst case scenario on both this article and that article, so those will have to be re reconstructed to get the numbers closer. Now, if it runs on natural gas, is it cheaper? The generator, no. It's no, just, no, not the generator. Right, but um, just the fuel is. But just looking at it, you know, I talked to Colin a little earlier, and uh, just looking at the timelines and knowing what it takes permitting and everything else, I don't think we could actually wait for the gas line to come in. So. Right, yeah. but you could run it on propane temporarily. Just like the Caro mill right now is running on propane, he'll, yeah. he'll switch as soon as it's hooked up. And then convert yeah. over, yeah. I, I suppose we could look at that, because yeah. the propane natural gas is an easy conversion. We have the tanks. So we, have, the, we have some there. But. What's the uh, chance of getting natural gas here, though? I mean, we it's looking good. It's looking good. Looking good. Hmm. That was a discussion yesterday. <laughs> That was that log jam that I <clears throat> mentioned yesterday. Once we pulled the leaves off the grate, the water flow, I mean, it opened the floodgates for a lot of, a lot of projects that were standing by. So you'd be looking, you'd, just look, you'd be looking for the motion on this, the consensus? Um, I think the way the contract's written is, you know, we agree to these two and then we're also agreeing to 
three and four pending town approval. Town approval. So nothing will be done or agreed upon until we get town approval. Um, so I, the way this we don't is have written, to have a vote on it, just a consensus. <clears throat> well, I mean, you might as well vote. You're here, so. Um, but right. just to move forward with it for one, I mean, it's it is a significant amount of money, so. You know, it'd be good to have. Yeah, T task three and four permitting. You can't do permitting until you do preliminary design. Right. You know, so. they, they're just the order of sequence. And final design, obviously, you, you have to have preliminary done. Mm -hmm. But we can't wait on the first yeah. two. First two. Otherwise, as you know, we would only have less we, than what, we, 30, 30 days to have them design, yeah. engineer, and everything else. And, and like that, I said, it's a five-month process. Right now, we're squeezing it to three. Right. There, there's just no room for error. Mm -hmm. Matt, with that said, I, wait, wait. I just want to ask, and Matt said, you'll, you'll get to sign this, right? Cause yeah. There's, there's two signatures, so I can sign. I think my name was already on there. And then... I can have Josie sign as the commissioner for the, for the, second, the second name okay. and signature. So, oh, was the second signature reserved for task three and four? I don't think so. No. I would think it probably is. No. We're, we're approving the. I thought that's the way Gina explained it to me that you could sign this one and then Matt would sign three and four when it comes out of the town yeah, meeting. I, don't, I think that would be a separate. Wouldn't that be a separate? Um, Agreement. I think we're only, we're only approving the, the task one and two today. Exactly. So, but that's what I think. But I would think one of us has to sign it. Uh, Bob. Uh, yeah. For the, for the task. So I would make a motion that we approve the 46.5 for task one and two to uh, get the preliminary engineering moving on uh, the project that's submitted. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Remaining 53 will be that will be done now. Meeting. Yes. Work that out as well. That's going to be Is that going to be this town meeting or? Yeah, special, yeah. May, special town May, meeting. May, May 3rd. Oh, it's a special town meeting. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. And I've probably written it down 105 times. When's the May? One? May 3rd. May 3rd. May 3rd. I've got more scraps of paper written with May 3rd on it, wondering what's happening on May 3rd. <laughs> <laughs> this time. Just go somewhere. Yeah. Follow the traffic. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> so that's good. See, glad that we could get that, keep that moving, keep it moving forward. Well, I, I appreciate that because we just didn't have the time to wait till a May 3rd meeting to get the fir at least the first spot done. And it, and it worked out perfect where Bob found some money extra. Yeah, but where do you see the scrap metal we're going to have to haul out of here to supplement the budget? <laughs> <laughs> I know there's some six inch pipe buried. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 9,300 feet to be exact. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys understand the scope of the project. I'm sure you, Bob's been explaining it to you, mm -hmm. what's what's being upgraded. <clears throat> There's a nice little pretty map on the last page, which yeah, look at that. explains yeah. everything. You want to give a little okay. That will be... Oh, Bob. Oh, Either way, I can I can explain it if you want. I'll take one street. You take another street. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start off with uh, North Street, and that's between Main Street and the um, North Street Gilboa Street Bridge. Well, basically, I believe that ends at Chow Street, that's right? One, yeah, that's one phase, right? That's that's from one to Gilboa. Right mm -hmm. from Main to Gilboa, that's thirteen hundred feet. Right now, there is eight inch in that street, and we're upgrading it to 16 to match what's on Main Street right now. So Correct. you basically be bringing 16 inch along Main Street down North Street to the bridge, Correct. and then 12 across the bridge. I was going to say, didn't we just we put 12 inch in the bridge, but I couldn't go to 16 just because there wasn't enough room in the bridge. To go to 16, we would have to hang it off the side of the bridge. 
Uh, so we're going to go 16 all the way now? or is it 16 down to the bridge and then utilize the 12 that we put in already to get us over to Gilboa. And then from Gilboa, so that gets us to there. But like I said, we already did across the bridge just because when they were doing the culvert right. near the bridge, we had mm -hmm. the bridge shut down, so we might as well get that done so we don't have to shut the bridge is down. Is that going to be for another project? A 12 inch across the bridge? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. We'll go back. I remember discussing that years when that was taking place, and I think it was Dennis said that because we talked about the 16th and right. 12, and then we were concerned about that. And He said, he said it's a we, small section, it won't affect it. Yeah, never, never yeah when we go back into the 16th. And, and the other you part got of that is. 12 all the way up to Gilbo <laughs> Street, right? Say it again. You got 12. I wrote. The bridge, I, I ran 12 the bridge, the bridge across the, the bridge up. right to go yeah. right to the intersection at Gilboa. So on top of that, it would go another um, 2,800 feet from Gil from North Street at Gil on Gilboa down to the parking lot in the mill where we already have the 12 inch going from there to the Shell station. <clears throat> so we would upgrade that from it's six inch now. We would upgrade that to 12 inch. So we'd have 16 coming down to 12. And then the third line would be on uh, North Northeast Main, Main Street from Davis Street, which is 12 inch new off the 16. So we'd be continuing the 12 down Northeast Main all the way to the end. And then the project proponent would be doing that'll loop in 12 inch across there. So we would have 16 inch Main feeding two 12s all the way to the project. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll be in good shape right there. there yeah. And so the loop two, will be on the end. Right, and it'll yep. loop the two dead ends that we have now. Yep. So, <clears throat> so that'll finish that whole section out nice. And you'd have, like I said, 12-inch mains coming off of 16-inch mains, feeding two directions, so we'd have pen plenty of fire flow and everything yep. else. And they're going to have a bridge across the river, right? So yes. Yes. Are we be able to hang off of that, or are we going to go under it? However they design it, it would be up to the engineers to come up with that, yeah. what the best That bridge will be one of those arch bridges, which they bring in by section, yeah. and there's probably six feet of fill above it, so when you're on that bridge, you won't know you're on a bridge. Yeah. It'll be like a road with guardrails. So the pipe will probably be buried four feet deep, right. just like a street. So huh. when, that, when that bridge, where are they looking to put that? Are they going to come out onto the old? old no, it's it's going to just below our our pump station. station? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's going to be close to the dam at that narrow point. Oh. It's. I don't know if you guys remember where they had the discharge pipe coming out of the, the mills, wastewater plant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's right about there. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> makes sense. So yeah, just just below the dam is a section yeah. there they're gonna try to stick it in. So that's the theory now. <laughs> Always subject to change. Yeah. If they so put that's the first phase. No. And that's that's what you're gonna to refer to in the future as A, task A, one A, two A, three A, four B. Right. That's your loop. Task B will be the extension from Shell Station Dunkin' Donuts to Blackstone Logistics, and that's 2,600 feet. That's new pipe. And that will be Task B, the B, B group. And that's 12 inch? 12 inch as well. All right, now we're going to go right up to the intersection of Gilboa Street with 12. And then go down Gilboa 12. What about the other way and in, in up north? That's future? That's future. Yeah, I mean, it needs to be done. Gilboa, we've already had three breaks on Gilboa from north yeah, up to, yeah. basically from north up to uh, Cook Street. Right. So, I mean, we know that needs to be upgraded. I mean, eventually I would say what we should do is a 12 inch from that intersection up to Manchog, up Manchog and then up Mechanic. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then come with eight inches off of those for the little side loops. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that I mean, that's way it's, down the future. That's down the road, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I mean, if we were going to do it in phases ourselves without putting it out, I would say the next step would be to go, because we just put roughly 1,000 feet on, on uh, cemetery. cemetery, which is new 8-inch ductile. So the next phase, I would say you should probably go from that pipe on B Street down to Mechanic Street. Because yeah. once we get over the bridge on Mechanic Street, everything's six inch. 
So that's why anytime we're flushing or anything else, we lose all that pressure up on like Caswell mm -hmm. and up in that area. But if we have an eight inch new ductile, that'll help feed a lot of that into town without having that bottleneck on, uh, on Manchog or you know even B Street or Cemetery, all those. So, so we'll, probably, we'll probably be having these conversations on that. If, if, uh, once get that side gets that stuff. Right, I was going to say, to further on his, yeah. North Street would probably be once the pine, sand, or gravel decides to do something with that area, that, that, that would be a conversation we'll about that the other the street and then loop back down to yeah. in front of the Shell Station to loop that area. Yeah. Right. And that pop, that would potentially be so looking at that storage tank up mm -hmm. on North Street. I was going to say, is that going to include the storage tank? Yeah. Do we need... We're going to need that, I guess, right? At so that point, for fire protection. Fire suppression in those areas, yeah. And usage and stuff at that point, our usage might be up enough to justify adding another storage tank. Um, I would probably still recommend not a big standpipe. I would probably recommend like a, a golf ball style, a pedestal mm -hmm. tank, because that way you've got more usable volume. So you don't have a lot of water sitting there that you're trying to turn over. You can use almost all the water in the tank. Uh, and still get your turnover. That would be mainly for fire protection, though. Mostly fire tank. protection, but depending on how we designed it, right. um, you might be looking at using that also to increase your flows, um, flows and pressure up in that area. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, okay, that's the high. It's pretty high. Actually. Yeah, so. but I did look at that, and we're actually at a lower yes. elevation there than our... We'd have to build that tank like 100 feet tall. Really? That, that'd be like the bottom of... The golf ball would be at about 100 feet just to get our elevations correct with the Franklin Street tank. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Although it has to work at the same level. Yeah. yeah, and, you know, depending on how it worked, it's either you, you know, at first when I thought, I was thinking that that was higher than Franklin Street, but Franklin Street's actually higher than the top of North Street. Mm. Wow. Oh, really? I wouldn't think, I think. Me either, but it's almost 100 feet. That's why I said you got to go 100 foot tall with that tank. We need to lower Franklin Street. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but just to get the hydraulics to work correctly, you know, we might have to go with an altitude valve at the Franklin Street tank and then we could fill right off of that. If we didn't need to increase pressure, we could fill that tank off of Franklin Street and the, and the well pumps now without a booster station. So as long as we increase the volume enough, because that's really the problem, I don't think we have any pressure issues up, up that end of town unless somebody's pulling a lot of water, we lose the pressure. But if you've got the volume in a tank up there, you're not going to lose it you'll maintain your pressure and you'll gain your fire flows. So and I can tell you where the pressure problems are in town. Mont Row. <laughs> well, yeah, that's because it's not moved. <laughs> or anywhere up by anybody up the other tank. Yeah, yeah. Eagles View, yeah. all that area is, it's, it's that borderline yeah. pressure. Yeah. yeah I, remember, I remember looking at the different scenarios with North Street, with the the industrial plan saying if you did this, and, you know, different line sizes, right? And then the only had the tank in, and they had all different scenarios on that. Yeah, I mean, just based off of looking at everything I have, I'd say you'd probably go a new 12 inch up north, put a tank up there, and loop down through with 12. And that cross country coming going down. The, yeah, the other cross country. And tie into the new one down here. And I think that would kind of suffice <coughs> that whole area. Yeah, yeah and this go bowler is already one leg done. Yeah, so. Well, that'd be the future and then you know I've looked at a bunch of different things and knowing that we have issues with the water coming through um, I've heard rumors of a, a project up at the end of Caswell um, I would think for that project in order for them to have the flows that they need up in that area they're probably going to have to replace from basically the Mechanic Street Bridge all the way up that all the way up Mechanic and up Caswell mm -hmm. in order to get what they need for flow so <coughs> That's the status on that. I heard there was something. I haven't seen anything else yet. I haven't yet. heard any more about it. I haven't heard anything. I heard originally a while back, but I haven't seen, I haven't seen anything. I haven't Probably seen anything for, for a while either. Yeah. So. And I'm still working Davis Street. <laughs> haven't given up on that yet, so mm -hmm. that could come in any day. I think this, this first project here. Yeah. I think kind of sets the, we'll get us sets on the, the map. marker to get things moving yep. on all the other ones. Once, mm -hmm. once that comes in and they see that it's a project that size is feasible, then it's uh, the interest of it. Exactly. 
Yeah. Well, believe it or not, in the last two weeks, I've got calls from developers that I approached two years ago, and they didn't want anything to do with Douglas. And all of a sudden, they're calling us. So that's the good news. We're, we're finally, the word is out there, Douglas is open for business. Yeah. About time. Oh, we've, I've been waiting 50 years. Yeah. And, we, and, and we've, got, we've got a lot of acreage in land court right now off of Davis Street, which will be coming out pretty soon. I'm in uh, constant contact with Cheryl Viter on that, and um, we can get access to that land, uh, that huge area for development. Good. And all the way from residential, so no opposition, which is good. Close to 146. The time is ripe right now. Yeah, from what I understand, Pennsylvania within the last five years has built, I was told, 520 million square feet of warehouse. Oh, I believe that. Yeah. I was up on 84 there last in August, and I could not, I wasn't up there for like six, seven years. And, and I could not believe the development on 84. I went by an Amazon warehouse. My GPS was saying turn left in 900 feet. I mean, no, it was one mile. It, one mile, and I was at the beginning of this building, and I couldn't see the end of it. It ended at the intersection. That was almost 5,000 feet long. It was Amazon. Yeah, and it's just unbelievable. I mean, I couldn't believe the size of that building. Yeah. It's remarkable, too, because even the warehousing that they already had, I mean, the stuff that you order, and I'm not even talking, even if you ordered a specialty part or something, and it's at your house, a day or in a day, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, and it's an odd, you know, you ordered some oddball part or something, so it's really amazing they have the stuff warehouse local. So, yeah, I was told from somebody in that in that business that there's a shortage across the country. Yeah. Oh, there is, there is, and this area is ripe for development right now. I mean, Medline just moved into Serendipity Park, 800,000. The day they moved in, they said it's not big enough. 800,000, yeah. Now, rumor has it, they they think they're looking at a million. <laughs> so I, that's just rumor. But Serendipity is building one. Uh, Blackstone Logistics Center, 650,000. That's good. So it's, well, things are moving. The, the dairy farmer warehouse that used to be in um, Millbury. They moved down to the Sutton Park. I, I forget how much they increased their square footage by, the, by a massive amount. It was basically in Millbury, they were in an old barn, basically. Mm -hmm. So, ID, ID, not IDG, but something like that. How big, how big are the building down in um, 16? Yeah, I heard 600,000. But there's enough land to build more. Why they're not, I don't know. Yeah. Up in North Andover, um, they're building Amazon's building. It's a thousand, uh, a million square foot footprint, three floors, three million square feet of warehouse. But they're going up. I often wondered why in Douglas the the bit more of the business is owning the zoning side of things. Was it focused more on Gilbo Street going up towards the main truck? Because then, because any any other way, you got to cross both those bridges to get to town. Mm -hmm. Both of those bridges, are, are, you know, small, are, narrow, small, narrow, and crooked, they're, they're and lighting. they're old stone arch bridges. Yeah, and they're old. You can't beat the structure, the strength, yeah. but I would think, I mean, just from planting perspective, you would look at. <clears throat> You would have looked at that whole strip from there going through Manchog and then back down to 146. So you got you know, getting off, you're going through and getting back on. Well, the, the attraction now is to keep it close to 146. This one will, the reason we're putting that bridge there, you'll be a thousand feet of exit four. Um, I will also be approaching MassDOT to see if we can get a third lane put on 146 just dedicated to trucks. <coughs> with direct access into, let's say, pine, sand, and gravel, you could fit probably three million square foot warehouse. 
Our roads can't handle that truck traffic. Just can't. Neither can those bridges. So if you build a third lane with a direct on-off ramp right to 146, you force these trucks to use 146 because they're never entering one of our roads. And the bridge you had mentioned for this, for our million square foot warehouse, there might be a change to that too. We might be looking to put that on the Oxford side of the Mumford River where Berkowitz is right now with the theory that there might be a direct access coming right into that building. Now you look at Bosma's. Bosma's got the solar farm next door to McIntyre's property. They're almost at the end of that contract for solar. There might be something going on there too. I can't say, you just <laughs> but so it makes sense to have a couple of direct accesses to these properties and keep the trucks off of yeah, uh, local roads. Mm -hmm. Well, like Bob brought up, Mechanic Street. I mean, when they built that bridge, I don't know who was on the hoops that day, but <laughs> I ended up <laughs> at that right. angle. This will slow traffic down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it does. Yeah. And I even stopped to let somebody else come through, even though it's two lanes. Yeah. Well, it's got that and big curb, so if you misjudge it, you yeah, <laughs> you're scraping. Yeah, you it's, can't get two cars from there at the same time, really. I can. You go fast. Yeah, yeah fast. You go fast. That's skinnier. <laughs> I, think back, I think back when I did those bridges, I looked at it and said, "Well, I'm not going to go on an angle. I'm supposed to do a 90 degree right over." Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. too long to build a bridge on an angle. Just go yeah. straight, short as yeah. route. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. He's got a building there, too. Yeah, right on that corner. Yeah, on that corner. Yeah. Left the building. I know it was driving me crazy when we were trying to figure out that water leak over there with some of the stuff that was showing. I'm like, it's showing a service going there. There's nothing there. And then you start looking through some of the old plans, and it showed an old building on that corner. That old axe mill was down there, wasn't it? I'm not sure what it was. I think it was a picture. I forget what it was. Like the sewer plants where the axe mill was, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah the sewer plants at the axe mill property. Oh, okay. I think somebody had posted it on one of those social things. You know, they put pictures on and say, guess where this is? Yeah. And that was one of the, that was one of the pictures. Mm -hmm. so it was interesting. Yeah, I found it on the blueprints when they put some of the water lines in. You could see the building there. You know, they took ties off it. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> well, not getting those ties, but. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I got an appointment with a plate of fish and chips, so if you guys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do too. <laughs> make a motion. I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting at. Is that 416? 416. Second. Oh, in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.